Uh, would you all please join us for the pledge? Judy, will you lead it? You bet. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Rommel is on vacation. Everybody else is here. Is uh, Kelly? Good to be here. Kelly is Randy. Oof. Oh. Randy's out sick too. Yeah, he called. Uh, additions or deletions from the minutes? Not. No additions or deletions. No additions or deletions. Um, if not, uh, could I get a motion for approval of February 13th, 2023 council meeting minutes? I move that we approve the February 13th, 2023 council meeting minutes as presented. Second? I'll second. Any discussion? No discussion. I'll have a call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, nay? Okay, moving on. Reports. Council person none. Just a tiny bit. Uh, landfill met last week, and due to the winter weather conditions, reclamation work at the landfill has been suspended until mid-April. It just hasn't been good grass planting weather. <coughs> In addition to seeding, we still have some fencing to complete with May 13th as our current completion date, and I feel we've done real well to do this. We've had no real bad snafus on this project other than it snowed a lot. We are still investigating possible composting options and are shopping for a dump truck as we have no way to move snow should we get a bunch. Uh, the only thing I got is uh, Wednesday here at Town Hall at 6, we have uh, Deer Creek Days meeting, March 1st. Councilperson KK. Yeah, the, uh, I um, participated in the monthly hospital board meeting last on the 19th. And that went great. I had just one question, but Randy's not here. It's just on uh, uh, some of the revisions we wanted to do for the pathway that we presented to Randy and the mayor. And I uh, hadn't heard back yet, so just waiting to hear. That's all I got. Councilperson calling. Uh, about 10 days ago, I acted as uh, the town's ambassador to our sister city in Mexico, Playa del Carmen. <laughs> uh, I spent a great deal of time going from business to business and testing their uh, margaritas and uh, fish tacos. I was waiting for a report. <laughs> and uh, let me tell you, the tacos that we have here in Glen Rock do very well right next to the ones in Playa del Carmen. But uh, that's all I have. <laughs> no samples? Yeah. Sorry, no. <laughs> Tammy Clerk? I have not <laughs> tonight. All right. Lyle, building inspector. Uh, you mean, uh, Mary Castle? Uh, building has been really slow. F1 since our last meeting, so that's going pretty slow. I have worked on a revising the mobile home permit for moving one in or moving one out and we'll get that to the planning commission and uh, you guys probably see something pretty soon. Um, trailer fire at 247 North. Moving along, he does have all the cars gone. Um, I asked him to tear down the steel fences there, so he's going to do that, so drag it on a little bit longer, but the fence is shot, so it needs to go. So he, he agreed to do that. And Pacific Steel is going to come and pick it up, so I'm going to have to worry about picking it up. So uh, the city crew is going to help me get it. That's that angle iron or the frame yeah. iron? So you just need a welder to cut that up. It's painfully slow, but it's moving along. So <coughs> then the Commerce Block, just an update there, the One Oaks interested in buying that, but that pulls it going real slow because the wheels turn slowly in the company and it's a fairly low priority uh, <laughs> from the people of Boat Hill. So that's going to take a while. But they did expand into the, the, the room next to them. They're releasing that from us now. And they've got an 
they just gave us a proposal to do some remodeling. Uh, what they want to do in the phases, and they're going to pay for the remodeling if we approve it. I think we probably will. So we'll have some discussions about that. But I just got the plans to do that. So we'll, we'll let you guys. What kind of lease are we still have with them? Well, it's, it's on a per. It's annual. It's annual. Yeah, okay. It's on a per per foot basis too. So whatever the square footage is, then that's what's uh, that's what you're leasing for. But it's fairly cheap rent, and and and, and the company wide, you know, it's probably the cheapest rent. So that doesn't help us to move it along for a sale. So um, it might take us a while, but one thing for sure, we definitely have good rent. Lyle, what's their basic idea of remodeling? Do they want to do the upstairs, the downstairs? They really need more office space, and they need so the one that, that, that's in the middle right now. Downstairs. Downstairs that they walk into. That one doesn't have any dedicated offices. They want to build three offices there. I think we got a pretty solid plan on what they would do there. Then the one that they're renting that used to be the, the uh, Christmas store was in there. Mm -hmm. That one needs a doorway to get into that from the out, not from the inside. So probably make us a doorway going into there. And then that's uh, the big one that they really want to do is the main room that they're in now, right off of Birch Street. Mm -hmm. That's a giant tall ceiling, 20 foot or, or more. They want three offices in there that are enclosed. So we're looking at maybe put a mezzanine type uh, roof over that making three offices out of that. They got a hold of Stan Taylor to give him a bid. He's, he did the original work on that. So whatever work they do would match up with what we have. Uh, it's a pretty big, ambitious thing to put that deck on there. But that would be the third phase of the project. So it's a pretty good project. That, you know, it, it throws you up and down that what's the best use of that space. Uh, if anybody wanted to come in there and make a big store out of it, kind of hurt that situation. But at the same time, that's probably not where you're going to get. You, you need office spaces, so I don't think it hurts. So. Sounds like an excellent plan to maybe clean that up and get more office space down there. Yeah. But, but nothing up, good. nothing upstairs. Yeah. As long uh, as they keep in the game to buy it. Yeah. As long as they keep it. <coughs> and I think it truly is, it's a slow process. For them. So <coughs> maybe they get it. Do we not have anything for moving mobile homes in and out on? We do, but it's kind of vague. Okay. And what we don't have is uh, an inspection. So that when you move, uh, we do have a date saying it can't be over, I think it's 70, 96 for us. A 96 or newer has to be. But you can have a 10 year old mobile home that was a crack out that someone's going to move in. So without an inspection, just in the dark, whether it's a good, good, good move or not. So Douglas has that. I think they probably model after Douglas. So it's, I, I really think that needs to be. Able. Sounds like it would protect our property around town a little bit. Yeah, at least a, a standard. I mean, and the other part of the it's north side of town, the, the whole home part is we need to not let RVs come into that section. And currently, that's been happening. Yeah. And you get back to the point where like, no, you need to move a mobile home. Uh, we've been leaning on that. So that's just something we have to establish. Does our ordinance right now say that it has to be mobile homes? Yeah. Well, and it's, why it's are we not enforcing it? I, I don't know. I, I mean, a guy moves in with a really nice. RV that's big with three pull up and three slide outs you don't get behind. Except that it violates our order. It does, it does. And then it just can snowball on you. And it does snowball. Exactly. Just, then you don't have a standard on RVs. You know? so Some place there has to be a line. Yeah. That's Lyle, Mandy, Community Development. Good evening. Um, so in February so far, we've had 99 ice skaters down at the skate rink. We got the new skate sharpener in, and it's working. Um, last Friday, um, the skating was amazing, so 
super excited that Public Works is helping with us getting our skating going. Um, still working with Joe and McGinley. Um, I met with uh, Kathy from Senator Loomis's office last week. Um, Joe and I have done classes on um, a grant from Department of Energy. And on Thursday, Wyoming Business Council will be here to talk a little bit more about our grant. You know, we did get the $1.3 million, um, our next phase of that grant for McGinley. So we're still working on that. And uh, we're working on Fridays at the Square, so I'll get that schedule out here to you guys soon. Um, and then uh, Glen Rock Main Street um, would like to also do the beer wagon again next year for Fridays at the Square. So uh, next meeting we'll have our malt beverage permits here, and then we're also working on our tips training right now. Um, and then Grace, she's been an internship that we've had. She's going to University of Wyoming and working on nonprofits. So she's been helping uh, Glen Rock Main Street, um, adding some policies and procedures, going back and making a stronger foundation for our Main Street program. And she's also reaching out and helping us with uh, making some partnerships here in our town so we can have a stronger uh, relationship with other nonprofits, and we're starting to form our committees. Uh, Mandy, what has been the age of your ice skaters? Are they mostly little kids? Are you getting teenagers, old folks? Who's coming down there to skate? Um, well, a little bit of everybody because there's been a lot of birthday parties that are skating and a lot of adults, so I don't know. It's pr it's There's probably a few more children, and they're probably... Well, there's some grandparents that are bringing their kids in on the weekends, and then there's the Boys and Girls Club will be there on Friday again. So just a bit about everybody. So a question on the McGinley grant. What, what specifically was that for? So that's for them to expand into um, the aerospace manufacturing, and the Wyoming Business Council um, granted our building, but now we're still got to <coughs> figure out how to get manufacturing equipment in there. So that's to expand the physical building? It's an additional building. And are they an agreeable to that? Pardon me? Are they agreeable to moving in this direction, to expanding the building? Yes, on and then this yep, we're going to look at some more options, too, for the equipment. Okay. New building, no equipment. Right. That's what we okay. got right now. Thank you. Do mm -hmm. you have any sponsors lined up for all the events this year? Uh, not yet. Are there any other events besides Friday at the Square on the books? Yes. We have um, a brass band coming in on a Thursday night, and we have movie nights, and we're looking at doing some family karaoke stuff. Okay. Are you looking at malt beverage permits for every Friday night? Through June 2nd through the third weekend of August. Minus a few uh, Friday night movies. So on Friday night movie night, you won't? Any other questions? Chief of Police, Colter. Evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I don't have a whole lot to report today. It's been kind of a busy day, and to be honest, I'm just ready to go home and, and get some sleep tonight. <laughs> but uh, we just uh, had one of our vehicles got ran into earlier today, so kind of giving me headaches on how I'm going to shift cars around until we get the new ones in a little bit. But um, So between that and the new cars that we do have, they are waiting for equipment to be upfitted once we get those in in a lot better condition than we are now but um, got some guys off at training trying to get everybody squared away so we have more in-house instructors uh, working on the policy manual that we've I've talked about before trying to get things to jive and see what's going to work best for us here um, and you know anything else that comes in day to day so Coulter was the vehicle badly damaged uh, it's not too bad. Uh, the problem is going to be at body shops right now. The turnaround time, I think we're, we're probably, I haven't obviously called anybody yet because it just happened a couple hours ago, but I'm sure we're looking at two to three months before we could even get it into a body shop. So No one was injured, were they? No, nope, everybody was okay. Yeah. The new ones bad. are getting outfitted now? Uh, so they're at the out outfitter. Uh, they're waiting on the equipment, though, to actually get put in, and everything down there seems to be, every time I call, it's 45 days out, 45 days out. So at the mercy of... The, the manufacturers of the equipment. So hopefully, I mean, 60 days, I hope. Coulter, yes, can sir. anyone come in and look in your desk drawer? Uh, yeah, 
He has he has a wonderful surprise in his desk drawer. It's just yeah. precious. <laughs> it's furry. Yeah. It's not there all the time. Rarely. Oh, okay. rarely. <laughs> <laughs> no more questions? Chair of IT. Yeah, you'd be mayor and council, pro temp mayor and council, interim mayor, whatever we call you. Um, sorry, all the wrong terms. But uh, no, I don't have a whole lot, a lot of break fix. Um, we also have been, ooh, everything's hot tonight. Um, uh, kind of getting lists together and stuff for the new equipment and for the new vehicles and making sure that those are ready to rock and roll. And uh, yeah, other than that, just kind of the routine day to day. Is there any way we could stock? the equipment so that every time we so get a vehicle we're not waiting the, the two issues we run into is one just you know buying early buying early gives us uh you know we're you might lose that chance that you're buying either old equipment and you're stocking old equipment as they roll new stuff out or whatever and so then when it goes in it has to then be either reprogrammed or updated or whatever um two uh some of the issues that we've run into in the past in trying to stock this stuff early is that either we have to come here and store it and then, you know, get it down there, which has been an issue in the past. So we've had to make specific trips taking it. Like when we got all of our video systems in, we literally had to drive down just a vehicle to go drop all this stuff off so that they could install it. Then we tried having it shipped there. And when we had it shipped there and stored there, they misplaced a cable or two. And so we had to have some more cable. Like it just, so we found that this seems to be, unfortunately, it's not as efficient as we'd like, but. It just seems to be the best that once the, the equipment gets ordered, it's delivered and it's installed. Because when they, because it's pretty impressive when I mean, the upfitter down there, especially when they were doing it like a couple times, they do the Wyoming Highway Patrol all through there and stuff. They'll have thirty or forty chargers just sitting out in the lot, and they, you know, so they get a little stacked up with equipment and stuff like that. And so, I mean, they should be able to keep track of it. But every once in a while, something gets. Where displayed. is this being done? Uh, it's in Greeley. I guess it's Evans, Evans Colorado. Colorado, so right around Greeley area. Um, at a place called uh, Bearcom, formerly what was it called before that? But it's Bearcom right now, and they do. They're one. They're the Motorola kind of distributor in that area, so that's kind of why we go there. And they've been do doing. Do you anticipate any problems in getting your equipment? Uh, no, I it just so. delay a little bit. I think the issue, another issue for us, as far as stocking it goes, would be the test. We don't really know when the cars are actually going to hit the lot, and so these ones actually came a lot sooner than than even a dealership was expecting. So they kind of caught us off guard a little bit. And then, you know, if we, if we had a solid date, they're going to be there on February 15th, then it's a lot easier to plan ahead and actually get the things ordered. But yeah. um, the other thing is, is like these two actually came in, and uh, there were a couple of things that we thought they were going to have, such as a, a spotlight that they, they ended up not. There was a mistake at the manufacturer. But frankly, whereas five years ago, you would send it back and say, no, give me what I wanted now. Uh, beggars are not choosing, <laughs> so we will be ordering the spotlight to be installed. You know, so kind of a it's an interesting market these days. But yeah, it's hard to plan ahead, and, and based on the storage that we really don't have here, as we've talked about, you know, it's it, it's hard to plan ahead. So what a we, nice we use what we can from one vehicle to another. But, but what a nice problem for them to get here early. Yeah, it was well. It, it was nice, and I'm sure they look lovely sitting down there on their lap. Mm -hmm. Did we get a deal since we didn't get our spotlight? Yeah, we did, we did, and we actually. So, uh, what was approved on the bid? Uh, I think it was on the last bills and claims. If I remember, mm -hmm. right. it was less than what was anticipated. Okay. So, so yeah, we. I mean, it wasn't a financially. We didn't take a big loss. And we actually came in uh, with some government. Uh, I remember what they call that? Was that the government? Anyway. The, the government deals, they give you a little bit of a rebate kind of a situation. So we did come in quite a bit lower, which would be nice to make up for any of that difference. The, the cars are good. I have seen them via photos and videos, but I haven't actually physically gotten to get down there yet with the weather. So Everything looks good. It would be great to get them on the street, I'll tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's it for me. Thanks. <laughs> I just in the third department? Right, moving on. I'm just going to make a comment. Yeah, go for it. yeah, I just wanted to, to make a comment on the, the town and taking care of the roads this last snowstorm. I personally think they did a really, really good job. Got on the main thoroughfares really early and uh, did a really got, good job. I wanted to tell Randy that tonight personally. But thank They've you had guys. a rough winter, that, and you're right, Roy. Yeah. They have done an excellent yeah. job of trying to keep the roads open for us. It's a tough one. So. All right, moving on. Items on the floor. Up, boys. Here we go. 
Morning, American, or evening, Marion Council. I'm here with the Glenrock Golf Course. Uh, almost all of our board members are here, and Tony Laner's here to help support a little bit of our situation we're in. I'm here tonight to ask for a replacement pump for the gallery well that provides water to the Glenrock Golf Course. Um, give you a little bit of back history where we run into this problem. Last year, about mid-season, uh, the pump stopped, quit pumping water for us. We pulled it out. Luckily enough, it was just an electrical problem. Got it back in, but it raised some eyebrows of, we better look and see what we have. So we pulled it out this winter. We took it over to Jerry's Welding, which has a pump specialist that works over there on irrigation pumps, to break it down and give us a scenario or see what we had, actually. Once he broke it down, the set of top bowls, volutes, and impellers are gone, and the bottom is gone. Uh, the company that made the pump, that the town bought the pump in 1991 from, the, from, has been bought and sold four times since. And the efficiency of the pump is sold. They, they don't manufacture those parts anymore. So we were forced to scramble because we're running out of time by waiting on the Jerry's Welding to break down a pump, us get information. So we got, we called out for three quotes. I only got one written quote back, but I reached out for three um, via phone calls, and uh, we found one pump from Russell Industries that's sitting on the shelf for us, meets our specs. So that's kind of where the problem is. Um, give you a little bit of back history on the pump and the gallery well. Um, the pump and motor and well uh, belong to the town. The pump was bought by the town of Glen Rock in 1991. Then uh, pump motor was replaced by the town of Glen Rock in 2007. The well back history was permitted in 1920 at uh, 448 gallons a minute, which a golf course does not use nowhere near that amount of volume, 24 hours a day. Um, what happened is when the water became too costly and prohibitive to treat for potable water, then that's when the agreement with the golf course came into effect. I'll let Tony explain to you on how that kind of come about. Um, but before I let Tony have at it, I mean, I just wanted to touch a few little things about, and I think everybody here knows it, and I just hope everybody here knows it. The Glen Rock is a gateway attraction into Glen Rock. Um, the Glen Rock Golf Course also donates uh, golf time to the team tournaments at the high school. They uh, donate time to the school cross-country meets, the high school boys and girls basketball tournaments. Junior golf camp, camp is taught by our pro sitting right here in the back. And that's, that youth, that bunch of youth kids is our future for everything, golf, success in life. Um, also, you know, we bring about 50 to 75 people per month into town um, now, can I prove that they come downtown and they eat or they go whatever? No, but we hope that's our, our goal of getting them here. So I'll let Tony explain to you how they uh, conjured up the deal on water from the gallery well to the golf course. <laughs> Welcome, Mayor and, Mayor and Council. Thanks for having me. Uh, I've got a long history with the golf course. I uh, worked there for 30 years. Uh, started in 1987 and uh, stayed with it uh, through thick and thin and mostly thin for a long part of it. Uh, for a long time, we had a, a, a water right down kind of just east of Dave Kenoff's place, there was a Sandpoint Slough down there, and that was the water right. And uh, who, whoever acquired that, I think it was the Reeds, Gary Reed uh, acquired that, and he was very optimistic on the amount of water that that Sandpoint was able to produce. So we were struggling for water usually by the middle of, of June, if not sooner, and we just couldn't get a whole lot done, and so thankfully for the, the town of Glenrock stepped in and helped me for a number of years by allowing me to 
to uh, put fire hose onto the hydrants, the one down there by the, the apartments on 5th, I guess, and then the other one across the street from the golf course. So I ran fire hose. The, luckily, the the fire department here in Glen Rock had some old hose, and I had I don't know how many hundred feet. We, we ran lines everywhere, and uh, the town was able to, we put a, a uh, meter on so that the town knew how much water we were using, but they saved us for a number of years. And Dave Andrews was the uh, public works superintendent uh, at the time that we decided to do something different. And part of it was because this was right when uh, the big lawsuit and the, the hullabaloo over the Nebraska and on the Platte River water right situation. And, and that water right that, that Glenrock had was not being used at the time, and then our water right uh, was not nearly enough, and so uh, we approached, uh, I guess Dave Andrews and I talked about it countless times about how we could get those fire hoses off there, quit taking water out of the fire hydrants because that probably wasn't the best thing that we could do. And so we suggested, finally we sat down and said, well, what if we transferred our water right to Glenrock down to the, to the gallery well, and Glenrock then would, would be able to use that water along with our water right. And if we could build a pipeline from down there at the gallery up along 2nd Street, the alley between 2nd Street and Mesa Verde, all the way up to Ken Osborne, and then tie into the line that we had that ran from our original well over to the, the pond at the golf course, then we, we could strike a deal. And it was a handshake thing. I don't think there's anything really written down but uh, we did that we transferred our point of diversion from where it was up by Kenos down to to the gallery well and then the the town had the pump there and had the the facility and then we paid the the uh, electric bill and uh, the maintenance and then we got the line we we paid for the line being built luckily Glenrock Coal with that time was just closing down and they they furnished us with all the pipe and just donated it to us and and then we paid to have the line uh, dug and and got permission to go up through the alley there and get it done and so uh, it, it's been a uh, I guess a a great partnership with the town of Glenrock I know every year at the end of the the golf season I'd get a a bill of how much water we used and uh, they would just pass it along. They, they, the council and the, this town would say, "Well, you used so many thousands of gallons, but you know we're we're going to keep track, but we're not charging you." So that was a, you know, a tremendous partnership between the golf course and the town of Glenrock, and it it was from the very early part of the that I started. So it was probably in the it would be in the late '80s, early '90s that we use the fire hose and it was a godsend to get that pump and from that point that we were got that line built we haven't had a real water problem other than breakdowns since then it's been able to supply that golf course with water and uh, geez they've made unbelievable strides just since I've retired but uh, I, I think it's a worthwhile project it's a worthwhile thing to have for our town I hear lots of very good compliments from a lot of people. I'm proud to say that, you know, we have a, a nice golf course and it's something that we can hang our hats on and be proud of. And so I, I would hope that the council would continue to, to support the golf course in, in whatever way we can. And, and we certainly want to do our part as well. But uh, it, it was a handshake deal. I don't think there was anything written down other than the transfer of the the water from, you know, our or the point of diversion is, is written down. We had to go through the state to get that permission, and and other than that, it was just kind of uh, Mayor Solinsky at the time and and Dave Andrews and myself just sat down and said this could be a good thing, you know, it's it's water that the town can afford to to give and it's you know along with our water right it was a, it was a good thing to do and so uh, that's how it, it came about
When you say our water right, you mean the golf course actually had water rights? Yeah, we had a had a water right on that Sandpoint Slough, and when they built the golf course, you know, they had to have a water source. And supposedly that was, it might have even been before uh, Dave Kennell actually bought that property. It might have been still bronze, and supposedly the people who built the golf course were going to increase the, or get a better water right over time, but it never happened. And, uh, boy, we, we struggled. It was, it was ridiculous. And, and uh, by having those lines, those fire hoses hooked onto the fire hydrants, that saved our, that saved our golf course. We just, we didn't have enough water to, and, uh, you know, I can tell you lots of stories about pumping water out of the creek and, <laughs> Please don't. But with the you with the police department here, I don't want to get into anything too specific. You guys but, got uh, any pictures of the fire hose water in the golf course? What's that? Do you have any pictures of that, Tony? The oh yeah, that I'm work? sure. You know that we had it running right along the side of the fairways, and then the one that was up by the golf course across the street, we came down off the hill there by the uh, number one into that first pond right there and then I, I actually built a, a line from that pond over to the other pond and again got donated pipe and a, a donated uh, pump from Rocky Mountain Power from the, the power plant. They, in fact, the power plant provided us two pumps. They provided that pump and then they also, when we got in trouble in the pump house to do our irrigation, they came through with a new pump when, when the one that we had broke down and was no longer in use and so we've had you know we've had some volunteer help and and some donated help that was incredible and kept it afloat for a long time so do you know about the pump that's proposed here like what kind of warranty does the pump come with well i i'll scott probably knows more about that but certainly i think it'll be an improvement it'd be a lot more efficient Right, and uh, I know our electric that was bill. Another one of my questions was the electric my bill is staggering. Yeah, it's probably and, a lot better than the 1991 one. So. And we tried to, <laughs> I tried several times to get the uh, Rocky Mountain Power to give us an irrigate, you know, the irrigated or the ag exemption on on the use there because we're watering the lawn. I mean, we're watering it, but they didn't go for it. So we we pay a, a standard. Rate, which is a lot higher than some of them do. Sure. So. Any other chicken questions? We could probably get some free range chickens up there. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to plant some rhubarb or some <laughs> radishes or something along there. Any other questions? Thank you, Tony. Right, thanks, thanks, Tony. Uh, the pump is kind of a industrial standard. There's a one year on it. Um, it's a uh, when we went to them, we just kind of said we want a good quality pump, not the top of the line, but we want something that's efficient. And uh, <clears throat> this pump here is actually a 20 horsepower motor. The motor that's on the pump that was in there is a 50 horse. Um, so uh, Steve Porter had done some calculations on full load on a 50 horse compared to what we we're running, we'd say probably a minimum of 20% on our utility alone. And there. this is enough pump? It's yeah, it's a, uh, it, we had them spec it out to what we're using at the 300 gallons a minute, the correct head um, meets our voltage requirements down to gallery well, well already, so. It's in stock. It's in stock right now. Um, with the email he sent, he, you know, it's moved fast because if the one moves off the shelf, then we could be six weeks plus, and he didn't know what that plus number was. So bottom line, Scott, what's the cost? Um, the last page of your packet, it's $12,120.57. Is this something the town will put in, Scott? I think, uh, I think you know, we've kind of done maintaining of the pump we have sources to put the pump in the hole once it gets here um and we'd be more than glad to do that um <clears throat> if that answers the question you were asking just want it in the way it's supposed to you know yeah when it comes in we'd be glad to put it in the hole and uh then we're also going to put in 
Uh, we've talked, the board has talked about putting in a smart switch controller and a float control, an, an alarm, because what had happened on the old pump, it cavitated. It drew down too low in the water, run dry. So we're going to put some safety measures in of our own in there to make sure that doesn't happen to protect the equipment. Well, this, this pump this is a pretty modern pump. It's not like it's going to be a new model next year and be outdated. And no, it's, it's a, you know, I mean, it's top of the, the line. I mean, it's not top of the food chain there in the pump industry, but it is a modern pump. And, <clears throat> and I didn't know it, but I guess, I don't know if it's ag department or whoever sets a set of standards for efficiencies for pumps and motors where they got a standard they got to fit in. And we fit in all those requirements with this pump. So now, is it uh, if the golf course has to purchase this on their own, they're going to pay five hundred and forty-eight dollars taxes? Absolutely, if, if yes. If the city purchases it, they don't have to pay taxes. On it. Correct. And probably Randy, I'm sure, has some pretty good discounts at his wholesale supply houses too. So, and that's what I believe that. Go yeah. Well. On the oh, and also like the golf course, uh, you know, we struggle every year financially, and uh, we got new bookkeeper in place, new programs in place. So we started where everything's getting the depreciation account married to it. Like the pump will get a depreciation account on a 10-year period. So in 10 years from now, we will have money to replace that pump. But it just never had been in place. And, well, Mr. Like Gilbert, can I uh, clarify one issue? That the current pump belongs to the town, yes. and you're requesting that the town replace their pump. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was following. And it, it's something we have to do, and it's something we can't let the golf course go down. I mean, like yeah. you said, it's a gateway coming into Glen Rock. Yes. And that way it's a pretty sight when it's all bloomed out and nice and green, and we can't let that go away. So. Yeah. No pump, no grass, no yeah. golf course. Golf. And our, our golf teams at the high school now, my daughter's on that team, and I, it's really well, coming along. And kids that played sports up there at one time, you know. Yeah. So, cross country. Yeah, it gives me something to do now. Play golf. Yeah, let's <laughs> <laughs> the other places you sent out for bid, they're going to get back? To no return. And I mean, our, our time frame was short notice because literally it's uh, this is our fifth day of knowing where we're at. And our biggest fear is if it's not on the shelf, where's that going to leave us? Right. And you haven't got any other quotes, though. But Nobody's going to call back out of the okay. other two. But okay. you did request th three. three. Okay. Yes. Can I move, make a motion? Or? Yeah, you, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, absolutely. Why well, can't? <laughs> I, I, one, 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 you go ahead, make a motion. We can talk. I, I move that we uh, take care of the pump situation for uh, the golf course in the town of Glen Rock. I'll second it. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion? I, I, we'll find, I would like we'll to find the funds. Let's get something on paper. And you know, like an agreement of like you know you after the year warranty you'll maintain it you know within reasonable. We I think all of us would like to get some type of MOU in place to know exactly right. What, uh, and uh, then in the future, if this happens again, say here, see you guys, this is our pump. We agree to take care of it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Just have something on paper. I would absolutely like to um, see that. And whenever we can either draw something up or you guys, however you want to go at doing that, we can get. Uh, the when when that we implemented Monday? No, we didn't talk about that. Yeah, we, all we have to talk about that. But if you get something drawn up, we can just get it over to the attorneys and. Okay. Uh, yeah. Scott, the pump is going to cost us twelve thousand one hundred twenty fifty-seven cents. Will there be any additional uh, expenses to get the pump installed and operational? And if so, does the golf course have money to cover that type of expenses? We we do, and we're willing to. I mean. Um, like Tony said, I mean, the town's been extremely generous to the golf course for years. And and we try hard as we can. I mean, we do have some funds that can get it put in a hole. And uh, and also with this new design of this pump, the way this is called out, it's in short pieces so we can put it in there with just the lift of a man hoist and, and uh, instead of having to get a crane or 
a boom truck down there to do it. So does this price include your new upgraded controls? Um, no, the upgraded controls, would, uh, and I don't know exact pricing on that. Yeah? It'll be on there on our on Just put, yeah? It's in our interest to protect, put, to protect yeah. the pump, right. I think so we should we, have that in there, too. Yeah. Can we amend that uh, original motion that uh, the upgraded controls be included in yeah. the uh, p price that the town is going to pay to uh, get the pump? Yeah. I'll make a motion that we amend that to include the controls and what's needed for the pump to for keep it up for the protection pump. of the pump. Yeah. I'll second it. Okay. Any more discussion? Do we need to put a dollar amount on the... Uh, no, you know, I agree. You guys, you're the gateway, you know, tournaments. You guys have tournaments. I'm sure people go downtown and eat. Maybe not 10%, 15, 20, 30, but, you know, every little bit helps. And Retired people that want to come to Glen Rock to live that are golfers love to look at that golf course and say, where do we buy a house? <laughs> yes. And I, I can tell you already with the, the town square, we've had a lot of people at the golf course who say, you know, we're going to go down and take in the, the weekend. And, yep. you know, they play golf, and then they're, they're going to come down to the town square. And, and I've already talked to a lot of people who say, geez, that, you know, we like to come and play golf, and then we'll go down to, you know, when there's something going on, and it, what a great facility that is. So it it's a positive. It really is. It's, it's, a, it's, positive. it's a good combination. Get a round of golf in, and then probably Friday nights down at the square or yeah. something going on on Saturday. So. I know. I can speak to that in the past when I owned a restaurant in the downtown area. Uh, weekends, we were really busy. Sold a lot of white wine to those ladies, too. Uh, but we frequently had people come in for drinks and dinner, sometimes spend the night and go back to golf the next day. So I can attest to the fact that it does bring some business into the town. Yeah, this is no-brainer to keep up a golf course. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Do we need to put a dollar amount on the motion, or? I can, but you then have to amend it. Amend it again, but we don't have to. We don't know a dollar amount, do we? As long as we're willing as as to stand by whatever they can find, the best buy. Yeah, if you guys, you know, don't mind. We made the amendment to amend it, so. Auth authorizing the spending to be made to cover that expense, whatever it comes in at. Comes in. Right, as yeah. long as it's not an open check. <laughs> I, can give you, I can give you a ballpark okay. because I've, I've looked at uh, the controls on it and kind of piecing different things together. The, the original control panel that's there is, is designed to run that 50 horsepower. And I was going to solicit uh, ECI or another electrical company to get the starter reduced and the, the controls that are there that would protect the pump as it is. That being said, that starter box is old. Old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then looking at the starter box that would control it, um, the cheapest one I found, I believe, was around $1,700. So ballpark figure, I would say, for new controls and level controls, you, you kind of want to um, look at the level of the galley because we We've never been able to watch it and see what it's doing. And now that we know we pulled this this pump this last time, we had some cavitation. That's what took out that top bowl. So we need to obviously water or monitor the water level so that that doesn't happen again. But we also want to see um, during July. Yeah, peak, August, peak, yeah. What is our water level? Because it depends on the level of the creek. And so we may have to do some... Just different types of pumping and timing so we you know, let it fill back up. So um, those particular controls can run anywhere from a $30 float that just flops back and forth up to um, um, smart controls. Um, there's some smart controls out there for around $250 that will do that. So 
ballpark figure, I believe that you could put controls in for around 5,000, no more than 5,000. Does that help? Yes. If we can have it before, we, we have to talk about a workshop. But do a work session probably next work Monday. Session Monday, I'll have to do it. Okay, but the town planner used to be my boss. See if we can work something out. <laughs> 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 I, do think, I do think you want to get it purchased, the pump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah we don't want to get the pump on its way. Yeah. yeah. That was my question. Could I. Or could somebody contact Russell Industries and say, yeah, go ahead and issue a PO for that pump so we don't lose it? Uh, I wouldn't see why not. How would that? Would you do that? Okay. Now, I'll, uh, here, you can just have uh, this whole quote. Can't have my Scott will just hand that off to you. <laughs> Passing the buck, man, to the skeleton. Crew. And once again, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, for the golf yep. course. We got a vote yet, yes. still, guys. No. I don't think we need to put a. Beans, no more discussion. No, 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 no. All those in favor for replacing the pump and controls for the golf course, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Option carries. Okay, new business. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Welcome. Uh, resolution 2023. Uh, whereas it appears that it necessary for the budget of the town of Glenrock to be amended for fiscal year July 1, 2022 to June 30, 2023, taking into account certain unencumbered and unexpected funds. It is therefore hereby resolved by the governing body of the town of Glenrock, Wyoming, as follows. Section 1, General Fund Account 101.5025.5201, Professional Services, Town Attorney Fees, increased by the sum of 46000 the source of which will be unappropriated surplus funds. Passed and approved, passed, approved and adopted this 27th day of February 2023. Is there a motion? I move that we pass resolution 2023-4. I second it. Is there a second? Any discussion? Got to pay our bills. Yeah. It means there's no discussion. I will call for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. This is the oh, this is something. This is resolution twenty twenty three dash five. Whereas the governing body of the town of Glenrock has the opportunity to annually choose mayor and council projects, and whereas Glenrock High School has a tradition of accepting sponsorships to pay for their senior banners to be displayed on the light poles down Birch Street. Whereas the quote given by the representative for the senior class of 2023 for all 46 banners is $1,840, be it further resolved that the town of Glenrock approves a donation to the Glenrock High School in the amount of $1,840 for sponsorship of the senior banners as a mayor and council project. Passed, approved, and adopted this 27th day of February 2023. Is there a motion? I'd like to move to pass resolution 2023 5 for. Uh the banners for the seniors class of 2023. Is there a second? I'll second it. Is there any discussion? I think this is a wonderful thing yep. to do for our young people. Those are beautiful when they're downtown. I really like this project. Okay. Any more discussion? All right. I will call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? And ordinance number 739, an ordinance supporting the continuation of the optional 1% sales tax. Do I have to read it? No. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is uh, second reading? Yes. Okay. Is there a motion to approve it on the second reading? I'll make the motion to approve. Um, ordinance number 739 on its second reading. Okay. Is there a second? I'll I'll go ahead, Margaret. I'll second it. <laughs> the motion and second it. Is there any discussion? Just out of general interest, do we know where anyone else in the county stands on this? Right um, at the moment? Douglas postponed their third reading? Their, their second reading. Second reading. Second reading. Because of a, an, an illness. An illness. So, 
That's all. They've and nobody knows about Rolling Hills. Well, I'm sorry, nobody knows about Rolling is Hills. Rolling, do we know if Rolling Hills is? Um, the last I'd heard, the last I'd heard, they were waiting to see. Well, we did. You know what other Correct. communities did, but I believe that they were. Well, they've got two to go to catch up with us. They better get to moving. Yeah. <laughs> well, and there may be something yeah. else that we want to talk about at a work session. Get yes. information on where everybody else is at. Sure, yes. we can do our second reading. And yeah. Going. Yeah, there's still one more reading, so yeah. right. I'll yeah. third yeah. reading. That's fine. Okay. No further discussion. I will call for a vote. All those in, fa in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Passes. We need to uh, pay our bills. Right. I move we pay our bills as presented. Mayor, is there a way for us to remove one so that you can vote on? Take one bill out and. Uh, yeah, we did that last on. time. Um, Who's got a bill I, in there? I think if 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 it's you. Oh, I got a bill. Oh so yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. So if he we just vote. is it just him? Or does well, I don't know. Else? Well, I just thought he might want to vote in favor of all the yeah. others. Yeah, oh, yeah, we'll do but, a okay. but the three people would make a a majority. So if he recuses himself from the whole vote, but he wanted yeah. to vote on the others. No. You I'll recuse from the vote. From the whole vote. Okay. Sure. And, but I, did. I just wanted to make that offer if you wanted. Yeah. We did that last time. It was a little confusing, but. Okay. Then so I'm not going to vote. I think we'll be all right. Okay. Uh, who. Who seconded it? Who seconded? I'll second. Okay. Discussion? No. Uh, no discussion. I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Anything else tonight before the council? Did we want to set, set the work session for Monday? Oh, work session. Monday. Monday at 5? Okay. Ooh. That works. Yeah, I think I'm okay. And I, I would like to thank uh, Council Member Moulton for doing a nice job <laughs> of conducting our meeting and getting us through our business and hoping that uh, our mayor is having a good vacation and getting some relaxation. <laughs> okay. We get a motion for adjournment. I move that we adjourn our uh, council okay. meeting. I need a second. I'll second it. All right. All those in favor by adjourning, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Thanks for coming. Well, thank you. I guess I'll have to guess. Oh. It's not here.